Uh, Misha Tate, uh, uh, the number one contender for the UFC uh, bantamweight title. How are you today? We're so excited to have you back on the show. It's been a while. It has been a while. It's been a long time. Too long. Time flies and a lot of good things going on for me in the, the past, you know, couple of years. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked my way back up to that number one contender spot, and it looks like I should be getting a fight with Rousey next. So, I'm just waiting for, like, the official word from the UFC, you know, so let me know if that's what's happening. And then I'm just training like I become want to become the world champion regardless, so I'm, I'm putting in the work. Yeah, man. And, look, you're in a tough spot. Obviously, it's something that people are talking about. You know, you obviously you have two losses to Ronda Rousey in the past. Um, you know, how much do you have to kind of put the blinders on and go, all right, fuck this. I'm not paying attention to any of the haters or anything that people are saying and looking and you have to look at this as kind of like a new fight and a new thing. Or do you kind of welcome that criticism and use it to kind of fire the training and, and, and you know, fire the flame? Well, you know, I know it's there, you know, whether I read it on a daily basis or I don't, you know, I know that there's a lot of people who really doubt that there's any possibility that I can, I can win that fight, but you know, there's a big part of me that says, like, you know, screw you guys. You know, it's like, you're not in my shoes. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know. And, you know, and they can doubt me all they want. You know, rightfully so. But it, it still, you know, it kind of pisses me off a little bit. But it motivates me. And, um, you know, I, I just decided that I'm going to accept it for what it is. But I'm not going to let that dictate me. You know, it doesn't make me who I am. It doesn't determine, you know, other people's opinions don't determine the outcome of any fight. You know, so it's really just a matter of me staying focused on the task at hand and making the necessary adjustments that I need to make to be able to, to beat Ronda this time. Now, and you know, you're talking about the adjustments. I mean, obviously, Ronda has uh, improved tremendous, uh, tremendously. So have you. Um, you know, what, is, you know, obviously you don't want to give away any of your game plan, but what type of adjustments have you made and what type of fight can we expect if you guys do actually sign for this fight? Well, you know, I've, I've really been studying Rhonda a lot, um, and I've really been studying myself a lot and just seeing how I can, you know, watching footage of myself also. And, um, you know, I think that now that I, I, you know, I know for sure and I've been able to show that I have that, I have knockout power and knockout capability, um, and I've been adding a lot of strength and power to my, my training regimen. That gives me a, a huge boost in my confidence, you know, and it just makes me feel a lot better going into this fight. And, and the fact that I've been, you know, I've been training for Ronda for quite some time, but I feel like the last time I really um, got away from the game plan in the fight. And, uh, you know, I've just been training. Even when I'm training for other people, I always am training really, honestly, I'm, I'm training for Ronda because it's like I know that, if I can train to beat Ronda, I can beat anyone else in the division also. So I always am keeping that in the back of my mind. It's like, you know, if this works against Ronda, it'll work against anyone. You know what I mean? Because she's mm -hmm. the best. Like, so it's like, I always have that in the back of my mind and there's always a little, you know, portion of my training, regardless of who I'm fighting, that's dedicated towards beating the number one person, you know? So, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's a good, um, it's just a good, you know, good feeling, and I feel like I have a lot of confidence. Misha, I was curious, too. You and Ronda have always had a rocky relationship. I mean, I guess that's the understatement of the century, but it almost seems like after this Betch Kahair fight where Betch said the whole thing about the suicide line, you know, we all know the, the deal with Ronda's dad. Yeah. It almost seems like there's, there's kind of like this underlying respect that's developed between you and Ronda where – and I remember you made a statement, and I'm paraphrasing, where you're like, wow, it's crazy that you're not number one on Rhonda's, you know, list of people that she hates. Do you feel like <laughs> that, That do you feel that same way as far as Rhonda? Like, you know, you guys have fought twice. You've said everything that could be said about one another. Do you feel like now it's almost like where that's old news and now you can look at, you know, fighting each other as pure competition? You know, I kind of do, I guess, because I, I just feel like I'm kind of over the whole drama of it. You know, I don't want there to be someone that I could hate so strongly enough in my life that it can ruin or change my life. You know, I want to just be me and I want to be happy and I want to accomplish the things I want to accomplish. And I don't want to have to feel like I have to hate someone to, to, to do better or be better. You know, my, my motivation in this sport and in life itself is to be the best version of myself that I can be. 
And, uh, you know, I don't need to hate anybody for that to be, uh, accomplished, you know, and that, that's my, that's, you know, my, my life goal. So that is the biggest goal that I have. And, um, you know, I'm always challenging myself and pushing myself in other ways to, to become a better person, to become a better fighter. And, um, you know, I'm kind of, you know, over it. I, I realize, you know, Rana and I are probably never going to be friends. We're not going to, you know, have a tea party or sleep over anytime soon. But, um, you know, I, I'm kind of over the, the, the rest of it. Um, and I just want to come in and fight and I want to, you know, put my heart and soul out there like I do every time. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that I'm going to be the world champion when it's all said and done, because I know that I'm working my ass off. You know, I've, I've never been so motivated and just so confident in my life. You know, after those four wins, you know, I beat a lot of the top tough girls. I beat an Olympian and, you know, out wrestled an Olympian, uh, you know, in, in wrestling and, um, I beat a striker at her own game. So it's like, I know I'm evolving, you know, I'm beating these high level females in what they were supposed to be stronger than me at, you know what I mean? That Sarah McMahon was supposed to be a better wrestler than me. And this like, I out wrestled her and I out grappled her and, you know, Jessica, I, everyone was boasting about her amazing boxing and, you know, she's beaten everyone with this stellar striking and I beat her at her own game in that, you know? So I know that I'm doing well and I'm evolving in the necessary areas to, you know, to be the best in the world. So that's just where I'm focused at. You know, I'm not getting ahead of myself, but I know what I need to do. And I'm working every, every day. You know, I, I train like right after my fight, I was already back in the gym and I've been training since then because, you know, you don't get that opportunity, you know, all the time. So you got to make the most of it. Now, I mean, obviously huge rumors right now um, about Cyborg, I guess her team came out and said that uh, the UFC had offered them a fight. Uh, Giants or not Giant Stadium, uh, Cowboy Stadium. Um, UFC denied that. I, I, I guess uh, the unofficial statement is that you're getting the next title shot. Um, like, comment on that. I mean, what wh- what would you if they signed Cyborg right now and, and they signed her to a title shot? Would that bum you out, or would you just say, hey, you know what? You know, more power to him. More eyes on female MMA. Well, I'm all for empowering you know women in, in mixed martial arts, and you know I could. I can find the, you know, the silver lining or the positivity in it and anything, but, um, you know, if, if it was something that had been in the works for a while and it was something that was like, you know, this is going to happen and, you know, Rhonda's, you know, going to fight Cyborg and Cyborg's agreed to make 135, I would get it. But I feel like right now I, I put in the work, I did everything that the UFC asked for. I did everything that the fans asked for, for me to prove that I am the woman who deserves this. And I think so far I've proven that I have something that nobody else in this division has been able to prove so far, you know, that I have something unique, you know, um, and that I'm able to push around and actually make her fight. And um, that, you know, that's a good, I've earned it. And I think that I should be the number one center. I think I should get it yet. You know, I should get it. So yes, it would bum me out if they, they took that away from me because, from everything I understood is like I've held up my end of the bargain and it's definitely something that I've rightfully earned. If they uh, if they came in right now and said, you versus Cyborg, number one contender fight, would you take that fight? Well, I already said that I would fight Cyborg. Um, I said that I would fight her to catch me at 140. But um, even better yet, if it was at 135. Um, but the thing is, is that they already told me, like, hey, you've already done enough. You know, so, I mean, if it was really necessary, um, then I guess I would, you know, if it's like what really needed to happen to determine the number one contender. But you know, it's kind of like sucks. They're like, oh, you, you know, you win your your next four fights, and you beat, you know, you beat so and so, and you beat so and so, and you beat these other top ten girls, and you've earned yourself a title shot. And then they'd be like, just kidding, you know, like <laughs> yeah. now you have to fight cyborg, <laughs> like you know what I mean? <laughs> like that'd be kind of fucked up, you know. So I think that uh, right now that I I I should get the shot, and I don't think that I should have to fight anyone else. But you never know. Well, um, I was going to ask. So the uh, rumor is that the that the fight will be on the fifth and it will be at the uh, Dallas Cowboy Stadium, like Lewis said. Like, is that mm-hmm. in the back of your head? There's like, you know, it's going to hold a hundred thousand people, and you know, it'll, it'll be the biggest UFC fight of all time. Is that something that's going to get like, you like amped up, or? Yeah, it's the perfect stage for me <laughs> to be able to become a world champion. You know, it's going to be the biggest stage and the biggest opportunity of my life. So, for me, every time that I get a chance to up my ante and step up my game and do more and do it bigger. I'm all for, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to, to beat myself, you know, I'm in a race with myself and, uh, you know, I always, I always want to, 
do bigger, do more, do better. And that's definitely bigger, better, and more. So that would be extremely exciting, and I'd be stoked for that. And you mentioned before the last fight you had with Ronda that you kind of got out of your game plan. And, and I agree with you. I felt like you were having success in the feet, but then you got aggressive. And once you get into that wheelhouse of Ronda, she can get any sort of hand on you. She's obviously going to use her judo and toss you. But watching the Betch Gahea fight, Ronda stood, traded, went right at Betch. I mean, it was like she was almost like Ronda wants to show new wrinkles in her game. And I think a lot of people on paper look at your striking versus Ronda's and they give you the advantage. You must have been licking your chops watching that fight. And do you think that she would be brave enough to be like, you know what? I want to beat Misha on the feet. I want to prove that I'm a better stand-up fighter. Do you think that she would go there with you? Or do you think that, or are you game planning for the same type of fight where she's going to be smart and go straight to her judo? Uh, I definitely, uh, like you said, was like, yeah, licking my chops when I basically, that's a great terminology. When I saw that, I was thinking, oh man, like, I would not go down with a punch like that, that's for sure. And I wouldn't be turning my back to her and running away, and I wouldn't be doing this. You know, I was, like, just thinking, like, gosh, if I was in there, it'd be such a different fight, and I know Mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, I just think Betch is just not on that level. I don't think she holds a candle to Ronda. And I just think that it was, uh, you know, just because she was 9-0, and like, she wasn't beating very, you know, credible girls, in my opinion. And it showed, you know, the skill set difference showed. When you, you beat someone... In that fashion, you know, when that's not even technically Ronda's strength, and it just, um, you know, it was just like, okay, wow, well, this really was, you know, a horrible mismatch, and I was hoping that it was going to be better than it was, but it wasn't. It was exactly what I expected. So um, I just know that I'm a much better fighter than Betch is, and I know that that's not going to happen when we fight. And I think that Ronda might go into the fight thinking, like, hey, you know, she might have a, a heightened confidence in her striking. Think like, oh, you know, I'm going to prove everyone, you know, I'm going to beat Misha on the feet. But I really think that once I crack her hard, like she's going to resort to her judo, you know, she, she knows that's her bread and butter. She knows that that's what her, you know, that's where her comfort zone is. And I think she's just instinctually not prepared to, to deal with that kind of power, you know, that I would throw at her when I hit her before, you know, she, she wanted to grab me, you know, so it was just like, I've been in there with her enough. You know, I feel like I know Rhonda the best out of anyone, and she's going to want to, she's going to take a hard hit, and she's going to grab me, and she's going to try, or try to grab me, I should say, she's going to, but she's going to try to, <laughs> and uh, she's not going to want to, you know, she's not going to want to deal with that. I'm, I'm a much better striker than Betch is. I have a much better chin, and I have a huge heart, you know, and I, everybody knows I can take a punch to give a punch, and I'm ready to do that, you know, with, with anyone, you know, the best in the world, so. I, uh. I don't mean to turn into a complete um, meathead here, but <laughs> I, I kind of have to. I'm reading this right here, and I, I see you, you, <laughs> you, you talked recently about the uh, wardrobe mal- malfunction that Elizabeth Phillips had in her UFC on Fox uh, fight against Jessamine Duke. Woo! And uh, you said, I guess <laughs> the, the quote was, I doubled up after I saw that. Is that I guess you're wearing uh, two sports bras or something along those yeah. lines? Is that uh, completely yeah. horrifying? For is that? Let me ask you this. Because we, I, I remember uh, a while ago there was a, there was another fight. Um, I forget who it was, but it was like really close. It looked like her her boob was gonna pop out. How distracting is that when you're in a fight, going like, "Oh shit, that's something that I now have to think about." Is that even in your mind at all, or is it like adrenaline kicking in, and then you kind of watch it in the tape with embarrassment afterwards? Well, it's like it, um, it's like you're definitely. I was definitely thinking about it before the fight, and I was like, "Man, you know." And I mean, it can happen with with anyone in any, you know, any branding of clothing, I've seen it happen to the females before, you know, but there's things that you learn, I suppose, is like being a veteran that, um, you, you want to make sure to you know, double up is one thing, you know, or wearing something with some kind of underwire support, you know, so that it doesn't just come up or go down. Uh, so there's different things and techniques that you can use to try to keep yourself in. But, um, you know, yeah, I was thinking about it before the fight, and I got a little a little nervous just because you know I didn't I didn't have my you know access to anything but just another you know another uh, sports bra. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna put it on, and and then once you get out there and you think you're fighting and you don't really uh, you don't really focus on that. But I mean, I, if if I did notice it happening in the fight, there's a really good chance that I would you know be willing to like put myself out of position to like fix it, you know, because that's that's just 
it's one of those things that's really hard to to not want to like tend to even when you're in that fight mode because you know it's one thing if you were you know in a in a, a gym somewhere or you know a high school and there wasn't that you know there's no cameras or whatever then it's kind of like well whatever you know a couple hundred people are going to maybe catch a glimpse okay whatever but when you're on national television and it's like around the world and you know there's a stadium full of people it's kind of like well that's a little more <laughs> yeah serious so oh, yeah because that so, was yeah. like uh uh screenshotted within three minutes i mean everybody it was all over the internet already for that one yeah, we I did know. we did a 40 minute segment on the show <laughs> it was it wasn't good i'm not proud of myself misha and to uh, be fair though <laughs> if i can say this really quick uh Please tell Brian that if if one of of uh, his balls were exposed, we would also oh, talk we would have done his a ball. two hours. So we would have done a, a fucking week long special <laughs> on Brian's balls. So. Uh, uh, I'll tell. Him. I'll make sure to relay that simple uh, special. As it kind of relates, you know, it's kind of a, it was a or it was rumored a while ago um, when that whole fappening scandal happened that uh, that you were one of the people that uh, they leaked photos of. And um, I never checked. I don't know if it actually. I I I don't think it happened. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't have checked because you are a friend of the show, and yeah. I don't disrespect you that way. But how scary was that shit? Um, to have to worry about that thing being out there. Well, yeah, it was weird, you know. But my management hit me up right away and asked, and I was like verifying, and they sent me like what what was supposedly supposed to be the photos of me. And it just, it doesn't look anything like me. I think even one of the girls has a belly button pierced or whatever. And it was like, and they were nothing even that bad. It wasn't like you really saw anything, you know, but it was like just someone trying to get, I don't know, probably just someone trying to get attention or trying to get money, you know, okay, you better pay us. But it was like, I know that they didn't, they didn't have anything, you know, so, but I mean, it's kind of a reality check. It's kind of like, oh, it's kind of scary for anyone, you know, to, even if you're not, you know, in the, in the spotlight still having your your privacy invaded like that but it's like the kind of world that we live in so i think there's just you know one of those things you have to deal with and try to take steps to avoid something like that happening not for me I'm, i wish something like that would happen in my career it would be but it would probably launch me <laughs> to a new level i'm a nobody misha um right. look we're gonna we're gonna let you go and you are obviously one of the coolest people and we always appreciate you taking the time to talk with us um <laughs> excuse, me. <clears throat> excuse me you and brian both uh, obviously follow you guys on twitter um, anything else that you guys want to plug? No, I mean, um, well, I actually, I'm filming my first movie at the what? end of August. So. Oh, shit. What? Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. It's called Fight Valley, and it's kind of going to be something along the lines of, um, like a female, uh, um, oh my gosh, of course I'm going to draw a blank on the room. I'm outside walking around, not Warrior. even thinking, uh, so what was Brad Pitt? King what was it? Um. Fight Club? Yes. Yes. It's going to be like a, kind of like a female version of that sort of, but, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not like the main character in it, but, uh, I'm like the trainer. And so it's going to be pretty cool. I'm really excited from, you know, my first dabble in that and it's going to be really fun. So are you, are you taking acting lessons? You know, I have taken a little bit and yeah, I'm trying to do everything that I can to, to make sure that I'm prepared and ready and even tips on YouTube and all that good stuff. But it's a, it's a role that I think, it's me really easy, so fortunately I, I'm not having to step too far out of character for for this uh, to play this role. So I think it'll just be a very natural one for me and, and easy. Just kind of get my feet wet in the acting world and see if it's something that I that I enjoy or even that I'm good at. You know, I don't even know. Like I might suck. I might be horrible. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna um, try it though. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I, um, you know what? I will say this right now: there is no way that you will suck more than. Uh... Todd Duffy and never back down too. <laughs> oh he's a friend of the, he, oh, he's a friend of our bad. show, but holy shit, he was even like apologizing <laughs> to us. He was like, "I know, I know." He's like, "They just offered me, I just took the money. I didn't know what the fuck I was yeah, doing." Seriously, I would rather get head kicked, knocked out by Crow Cop than have to watch another Todd Duffy performance. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> everything we, I mean, we do stand up, and people always compare stand up comedy to being one of the most terrifying things. Obviously, uh, fist fighting people in a cage, very, very terrifying. But all acting is another. Very weird, like, and you feel you feel very naked when you act. Everything from, from, from the way your hands are positioned to your your facial movements, and you're like, you're everyone's yeah, the a, facial expressions. That's a huge part of it. It's like you have to be able to convey an emotion with a facial expression and make it look authentic. And I think that's really going to be the challenging part. But I've really been studying like 
other actors and kind of seeing like just you know what what makes them good like why do I like why do I enjoy this actor this actress what is it about them and usually it's that they have great you know facial expressions and body language and it just doesn't it doesn't feel like you're watching something that's being acted out it feels like you're really you know watching like a segment into their life or something and I'm like okay well you know that gives me some good insight I said I have no idea if I'm going to be that good at it or whatever I'm going to try my best but I may be horrible, I, I, I may do, you know, I may have a knack for it, so I don't know. But I do know I'm not uncomfortable in front of cameras, so that's a really good thing. I think some people get really camera shy and freeze up, and I'm like, I don't mind it at all. I, I don't mind being in front of the camera, so I'm more I'm more one of those people that's a little, uh, like, get a little bit nervous when I'm in front of, like, a crowd, like, speaking in front of a crowd, like what you guys do with stand-up comedy, that would make me more nervous, I feel like, than, you know, doing like an acting scene yeah, in front of like right. one camera and a few people you know you're right misha i am a badass <laughs> <laughs> see dude i'm the opposite i'm like i'm like way more comfortable in front of a thousand people than i am in front of like one girl who i may have a chance of talking to yeah. i fucking just fumble <laughs> fumble yeah um all right fight valley look out for misha tate uh the uh the, it's gonna come out next year i guess right 2016 you're filming this fall um, no, I'm filming at the end of August. Oh, so. it's coming out. Oh, it's coming out. Yeah, like a couple of weeks. Who else is going to be in this movie? Is there um, anyone else Actually, that we Actually, Chris Cyborg's going to be in there. Oh, She's going right. to be in it. Your arch nemesis. Yeah. Uh, no, she, I'm I'm cool with Chris. I think she, she hates Ronda, too, so we're like, <laughs> no. we get along great. She's actually a very sweet person, but um, and uh, Holly Holm will also be in the movie, and I think that's all that you guys would... Uh, no, from the fight world, anyways. So it'll nice. be exciting. Nice. Right, well, listen, man, uh, you're awesome as always. Thanks, Misha. Okay, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Take Misha. Care.